showing off deadly weaponry in massive war games is a tactic China and the United States use to try to avoid full-on combat. But the truth is the two countries, as well as other nations including Australia, are already battling it out in an invisible war. There are no frontline soldiers, but there are regular skirmishes. Until now, these conflicts have been kept quiet. But key members of a secretive alliance of top cops from Australia, the US, the UK, Canada and New Zealand are about to change that. Their group is called the Five Eyes. And tonight they want you to know what they see. With democracy under pressure and authoritarian regimes getting bolder, we're living in dangerous times. Russia thinks it owns Ukraine. The Iranians are making a mockery of human rights. And China is getting more assertive and more aggressive by the day. That's just what we can see. But what we can't is just as frightening. Everything is interconnected now. It's really a hybrid uh, threat uh, that we face. A silent, invisible struggle is already raging. And in this case, it's not the military on the front line. It's a different crime type that we've had to go into, in, into espionage and foreign interference. In what is undoubtedly a new era of modern policing, Law enforcement agencies are leading the charge. We need to fight very hard to try and protect democracy. Tonight, the view from inside the world's strongest policing alliance. We're very occupied by the actions of the authoritarian regimes of a number of states. With rare access to the Five Eyes, comprising policing chiefs from the US, UK, Canada, New Zealand and Australia. I've never seen the system so complex, so busy, you might think you know what's going on, but the information these guys are privy to is chilling. It's also in a dark on democracy. And there is one threat that alarms our Five Eyes partners more than any other. Which state actor is the key threat to democracy in Australia and amongst the Five Eyes partners? If we had to focus on one, uh, the Chinese Communist Party, no doubt. Chinese, uh, we've seen it front and center. So it's a massive effort from the Chinese state. We're locked in a great power struggle with, uh, with China. Last week in Melbourne, the Australian Federal Police hosted a rare in-person meeting of the Five Eyes Law Enforcement Group. These dealings are normally secret. The views of these top cops seldom shared. But in these exclusive interviews, our intelligence allies aren't holding back. Paul, thanks for your time. Thank you, Nick. Your boss, the FBI director, has called China the greatest long-term threat in respect of American interests, thanks to its spying and foreign interference. Does that same description apply equally to Australia? I think it applies everywhere. The scope and scale of the illicit and illegal activities that the CCP uh, is engaged in is the, the volume of that uh, is just... Uh, it's, it's incredible. Deputy Director Abate's attack on the Chinese government doesn't stop there. It poses a grave danger to each of our countries, our way of life, our democracies, and the freedoms that we value so much. The Americans describe a growing menace on our doorstep in the Pacific, flowing from China's increasing influence in the region. You see the Chinese state preying on Pacific Island nations? I believe so, yes. In what way? I think they're using the island nations to expand their sphere of influence. They're pushing out. They're trying to build, uh, you know, airfields around the Pacific so that they have more access to the, the shipping uh, so that they can, you know, increase all of their activities in the, in the region. And I think they're, they're looking at every different area to find places where they can influence and, 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 and put some of their tentacles um, and I think anything to benefit their own interests. Are you surprised how successful the Chinese government has been at times in terms of uh, gaining influence in some Pacific Island nations? Yeah, I'm surprised. They have been very successful at it, uh, and they've been very aggressive in doing that in the Pacific Islands, and they take advantage of uh, the societies, cultures, you know, that need help. Uh, vulnerable populations, they go in, they offer assistance, they offer money, 
and then uh, they gain influence and then they, they're able to extend their power base. So we're trying to play a little catch up. Secret intelligence shared by the Five Eyes indicates China is using organized criminals to do its dirty work. In Canada, I know we've had ties from organized crime all the way up to the Chinese state. And what's the overlap? What's the mutual benefit, the mutual interest? I think it's just to create uh, the instability within the country or that region. Uh, it's also an attack on a democracy. It, it has a significant impact on, 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 uh, on Canada. They're into everything. The transnational criminal organizations throughout the, um, the Pacific are into everything. So they're polycriminal, meaning they, they will do whatever to make money. So they're going to traffic in, in dangerous narcotics, any kind of drugs. They're heavily involved in money laundering. The Chinese money laundering is very pervasive and, and very widespread. Uh, they also are involved in trafficking of all sorts and some, you know, very much in you know, human trafficking and sex trafficking in that way, also labor trafficking. And to be clear, you're saying some of these Chinese crime bosses are sponsored or enabled by the Chinese government? Well, at least tacitly. Listen, there's uh, nothing occurs in China without China allowing it. So if those criminal organizations are operating, operating in any form or fashion out of China, the Chinese government allows it. They're a totalitarian state. They're a police state. You can't operate there without them allowing that. While the Americans are unashamedly hawkish, our top cop, Commissioner Reese Kershaw, treads a more cautious path. China's fast friendships are one of the reasons the Australian Federal Police was allocated more than $300 million in the recent federal budget to expand its Pacific footprint. But Kershaw refused to be drawn into the attack on China. The Chinese government has been very aggressive in terms of its police presence in the Pacific, police partnerships, etc. Is this $300 million from the federal government to allow the AFP to expand in the Pacific a response to that? We have a fairly large presence, as you know, in the Pacific. Um, I think we've still got about 60 officers just in Solomon Islands, as an example. And uh, Australian police, we have a deep understanding of the Pacific. Part of that, again, is making sure the rule of law and democracy is protected in the Pacific. If I can go back to the question, though, is this money, uh, the AFP's expansion in the Pacific, about countering the influence of China? I think part of it is is countering any organised crime group that's actually eroding away democracy and the economies of the Pacific. Commissioner Kershaw is undoubtedly in a difficult position. It's complicated when law enforcement meets trade and diplomacy, particularly when the Albanese government is seeking to salvage the relationship with our biggest trading partner, and the AFP relies on Chinese authorities to provide intelligence on drug shipments bound for Australia. The FBI has just called out China's influence activities in Australia. Do you welcome the FBI's forthright position on this? Well, we have a long history with the NPS. Uh, the AFP goes back a That's long way. It's the Chinese way. police service. It is, it is. And uh, we still have an exchange of intelligence with the NPS. And uh, we've been very successful in operationalising that intelligence, in particular in relation to, to drugs. We're up to 40 tonnes, I think, now that we've stopped from entering this country. And, and for us, that's a good thing uh, in the sense that we've been able to prevent that harm to our communities. Is that a bit of a juggling act for you as Commissioner? You're working with the Chinese authorities on the one hand, your Five Eyes partners on the other hand are calling out China for its unprecedented interference, cooperation with organised crime, all targeting Western democracy? I think um, what we have is mutual respect and we certainly make it clear about our sovereignty and uh, so do they, the MPS. And His language is careful, but even Commissioner Kershaw won't deny the presence of state actors enabling organised crime groups. They have the sophistication of, of being able to tap into different intelligence and they don't have the same legal framework that we do. So uh, their, their system is a, a little bit easier for them to be able to tap into different parts of their infrastructure uh, and we've seen that. Just to be clear what you're saying, state actors are working with organised crime to target Australia. What I am saying is, is that it's there, proving that is another conversation. But you've got no doubt that's happening. We've got intelligence that indicates, and that's not necessary from us. It, it can be from some of our Five Eyes partners. Um, so w we know that it's there. Calling out the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, how critical is that? 
is very critical. Uh, we need to sustain that effort. We need to bring awareness uh, to the public uh, so that the dangers that are posed to our way of life are understood uh, and appreciated. Uh, there are some in Australia who say, yes, America's calling out China. This is a battle between two superpowers. Australia must tread more carefully uh, given all the equities at play, trade, etc., for our nation. Uh, is there not some truth to that? Is there a danger that Australia will be caught up uh, in America's campaign uh, against China in a way that may not suit our national interest? All I can say is this. Our closest partners and friends is the Five Eye. That's why we're here. And we're going to continue to help and support and assist and bolster each other in protecting our countries and our citizens, our way of life, our democracy, and our freedom. But as you'll see, it's not just China in the sights of the Five Eyes. You know, we're very occupied by the actions of the authoritarian regimes of a number of states, most obviously for us, Russia. Fifteen months into its war with Ukraine, there's no doubting Russia's ambitions. And when they're not dropping bombs on their neighbour, the Russians are setting the gold standard in cyber warfare. They've targeted all of the Five Eyes nations, but nowhere more aggressively than the United Kingdom. Of the state threats issues, it's Russia that occupies most of our time. The vast majority of the cybercrime in the world, and particularly the ransomware, which is the most threatening to national security, comes from Russian-based, Russian-language cybercrime groups. And some of them we know are connected into the Russian intelligence agencies. But even when they're not, you know, they exist because they are allowed to. And they do pose a threat to the UK and to our Five Eyes colleagues and countries and to other countries around the world. It seems like an extraordinarily massive landscape you're tackling. Is the threat posed by Russian state-backed cybercrime right now at an unprecedented level? It is high, ransomware as, as the highest threat to our cybersecurity. The Brits are fighting back, expelling dozens of Russian spies and sanctioning oligarchs. But this pushback has had unintended consequences, forcing Russia's spy service to engage gangsters to do its bidding. We've made it a much more hostile environment in the UK for Russian intelligence agents. And so they have felt they've had to use other people proxies, including criminals, to try and achieve their ends. What are you seeing in terms of the overlap between state actors and organised crime? So we're definitely seeing a presence of that. There's a connecting feature, money, corruption, those things are present. This connecting piece of hostile state actors is uh, a really clear focus for law enforcement now in a way that perhaps has been the work of uh, others in intelligence agencies and, and in governments in the past. Back in Australia, the AFP is fighting Russian hackers as well. Commissioner Rhys Kershaw has revealed the Putin regime has rebuffed the AFP's requests to hold to account the culprits of last year's Medibank private hack. In Russia in particular, we've been concerned about the cybercrime uh, groups, organised crime groups, who are harvesting Australia's data and information and for profit. Is the Russian state giving safe haven to these Russian cyber criminals targeting Australia? What I would say is this, is, is that uh, our requests, uh, we haven't received much intelligence back, uh, but we have shared our viewpoint on who we think some of these individuals and groups are, given the fact that we've shared some very detailed, specific intelligence, we'd like to see a result come back and we're, we're still waiting on that front. That, that lack of help though, is, it's clear. The Russians maybe not be playing us for fools, but they're not, they're not there to help. And the outcome of that is giving safe haven to those who have come after Medibank and other Australian entities. Is that so? Yeah, and I think police to police, uh, we, uh, it's a one-way street at the moment. As if the Russians' state-sanctioned hacking isn't bad enough, Britain's National Crime Agency says the Chinese Communist Party is in another league. How is the Chinese state empowering Chinese hackers, cyber criminals to come after 
Australia, the UK, other Five Eyes partners. Well, it's a, it's a massive effort from the Chinese state. They have huge resources and, and they have invested in their cyber espionage. So we see less of the cyber criminality from, from China. That more comes from the ransomware groups in Russia. But in terms of pure espionage on a normal state level and then industrial espionage to steal uh, intellectual property, that has been really significant. What are you seeing China doing in terms of espionage, interference, going after dissidents in the UK? As a law enforcement professional, I'm deeply concerned about overseas police service stations, which are present across the globe. The FBI recently made arrests and crackdowns in respect of Chinese police stations unofficially operating in the United States. Well, first I would say this is what we've uncovered. They are now have charged criminally uh, in our country. Uh, it's brazen, it's illegal, it's unacceptable. It's a violation of the sovereignty of our country. These are secret Chinese police stations, effectively, is that hundred percent, absolutely. Their aim? What was their aim? It's uh, a further extension of the malign activities of the CCP. There are dissidents, voices who speak against the CCP, uh, some in the United States. And these police, these so-called police stations were used as a mechanism to threaten uh, and intimidate and suppress the voices of those who speak or spoke against the CCP. Obviously, we have the Five Eyes partners working together. Is Russia working with China, working with Iran, etc., to counter what you're doing? I think we definitely see that connection in a range of our work. They've got a shared interest. And of course, we've got a shared interest in, in defeating that. And, and incredibly resilient communities who've stood up against uh, threats before. And I would just add that the, the occasional marriages of convenience between those three states yeah. are nothing to the, the deepness of the relationships between the five eyes between Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the US and the UK, and lots of our other partners around the world. I mean, those are relationships based on, based on shared values that have lasted for decades and will continue. Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. Don't miss out on our Extra Minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.